What is up guys and welcome back to another video here on East County Garage. Today we're going to be taking a look at this, which is the Launch Sea Reader 7001, which is a very nice OBD2 scanner, but it usually retails at around $180. We're going to be taking a look at a bunch of the features on it, what it can do, see how it works, and tell you whether or not it is worth the money. Before I get started, I would also like to apologize. I am sick, so I'm really sorry if I sound kind of like some kind of dying animal. Yeah, uh, we're with a pet hospital down the street, and I understand you have a dying animal on the premises. But either way, let's get started. So today I am out here with the Mazda 3. One, because it's the only car I have that's actually new enough to have an OBD2 uh, for it. And number two, I actually do need a couple things done. I have a bad O2 sensor and I need to get a new thermostat. Now, how I diagnosed that problem was actually not using this. It's been like this for a while and it's been something I've just been neglecting the fix that I really actually need to take care of. But I actually used one of those super basic OBD2 scanners. Two, actually. First, I tried one of these little things. You plug it into your phone, it's supposed to work over Bluetooth. I have like 4,000 apps that were supposed to work for it and none of them actually did. So that was kind of a bummer and I actually wound up having to borrow Kyle's stepdads. That is just one of those typical, you plug it in, it tells you the codes, you can clear it. it doesn't tell you what the codes mean. You have to go, uh, what I did was I went online, I just searched the code, came right up on this website, and it tells you everything about that code, what it means, if you need to replace it, uh, and yeah, so I've been clearing it till it goes away, but I've decided it's probably about time to fix it And what better time when I have this I can really diagnose the problem double check make sure that's my issue And we will be fixing that shortly. So let's take a look at this now for that $180 price point You know it better have some extra features that the other ones don't and it definitely does um, This isn't one of those multi thousand dollar scanners you're gonna use for uh, shops and stuff, but it's definitely a lot better than the 60 or whatever dollar ones you buy at AutoZone uh, This thing will do a lot not only will it save codes for you So you can go back and look at them, you know after the fact of the scan It tells you what everything means built in right on here It can graph data give you real-time feed of what's going on with your car You can save data send it to a computer print it out And there's even an SD card in here to save that data So it's really good for data logging comparing different things seeing how your car is performing and really good for diagnosing all those issues so let's get right into it with the car running you can see I definitely do have a check engine light right there so we're gonna go into the reader right now and take a look when you get the reader it actually comes with a bunch of stuff it comes with the reader itself this little carrying bag that I've kind of shoved everything in for today's purposes uh, a cord to connect it this side goes into the car and this goes into the reader it comes with a bunch of other documentation but this is what I've decided to bring for today this pouch is really helpful actually you know just throw it in your glove box I happen to have the biggest glove box on earth thanks to the Mazda 3 you just throw it in there it fits perfectly and you're good to go so first things first you want the car to be on two clicks on the on position without actually igniting it uh, so that you know you get all the lights you know the instrument cluster looks like this and this can actually access the functions of your car so we're gonna go ahead and plug it in yeah, I've noticed that I'm not sure if it's unique to mine or if it's a problem with my car uh, This side of the cord connects very securely, you know, it plugs in and even have these things to tighten it However, uh, the connection with this wire feels very loose um, I don't remember it being like that with the other ones I've used I'm gonna double check that but when I use it It feels like I'm really having to hold it in and protect it from falling out again It could be a defect in just this one. It could be my car Again, I'm going to double check that, but we're going to go ahead and plug it in like so. And you can see it is kind of a loose connection. You can see this is booting up now. All right, so here's the home screen you had. It's a really cool and it's actually a very helpful interface. Usually I find when I work on car related stuff like this, the interfaces are kind of terrible, but this is really not bad. We got record mode here. So the first thing we're gonna really wanna do here is go into the diagnose menu, press okay. And uh, you can reset everything, which I'm not gonna do right now, or you can go into OBD2. 
Right now what it's gonna do is enter the system and scan everything. It's gonna give you all this information here. Once it's done, it gives you this screen. You're just gonna press OK and you'll be able to get in here. So now, these are the functions that I use most of the time. We have read codes, pretty obvious erase. You guys can see some of the other features on here. One thing that's kind of cool, um, that could be kind of useful if you're buying a used car. I mean, this thing in general will be helpful if you're buying a used car. But you can see the VIN and everything right on here. Just to make sure all of the pins are match so you know exactly what you are getting into. So let's go ahead and read the codes that I've been thrown out here. So taking a look at this, what's really nice is that most cars will just give you the code, but this will actually tell you exactly what it means. So right here on it, without having to do anything else, I have it right here, I don't need to go look it up, and I can actually save it right into the reader. So when I turn it, let me just press OK, you can see down there. So when I turn it on, uh, out of the car, I can go inside and do some research. I don't need to remember what it is or write it down anymore, it's actually saved right on here, which I think is really cool. You can see we actually have two codes, so we're going to go to the second one here. What's interesting is that I know I need a new O2 sensor and it hasn't thrown that code yet. It just hasn't gone long enough since I've driven with it. So you can see here I have these two codes. Um, it's actually showing the same code twice and it's saying this one's pending. So not super sure what that means. And of course, once you fix the problem, you can erase it. There are some readers that will only let you read them and you have to disconnect the battery to clear them. This is super annoying. I mean, it clears out all of your radio presets and it's just... That's such a pain, I'm really glad I don't have to deal with that. So, now that I know what the code is, and I don't really want to look at the light all the time, I can actually go in here and erase the code. Um, ideally, you'll want to do this after you actually fix the problem, you know. Erasing the code is never a great way to fix it, but it does have that feature which is nice because I really don't want to look at the code. So I'm going to erase it, press OK. It reminds you to turn the ignition on with the engine off. All right, started the car up. And as you can see here, it actually collects the data all into one graph and will show you everything going on here at once. So you can see when I started the car, my uh, RPM really shot up and everything's color coded so you can kind of compare up here and it shows you the maximum values for any of these entries down here. So right now I'm at 710 RPM, which is below idle. Um, you know, part of that is probably uh, the O2 sensor and the thermostat, I'm sure, but it should be around 800 or so. <coughs> My car is very shaky, so yeah, the, the check engine light was definitely warranted, and that's something I need to fix, but it's cool, you can see everything on here right as you're going. Uh, you can switch between miles an hour and kilometers. Right now it's on kilometers and Celsius, I just haven't fixed it all up, but you can see it is kind of a, a live feed with a little bit of delay, of course, but you can kind of see what's going on in real time with your vehicle. You know, if you're trying to figure out something or really source where a problem is coming from, I'm sure you could kind of, you know, sit this here, mount it somewhere, and watch what's going on with your vehicle as you drive it, which is very cool and definitely not something you'll get from any of the basic readers. Now, to be completely honest with you guys, that is for the most part the extent that I will realistically use this for at all. There are a lot more features and settings you can go through, and you can get a real, I mean, you can even change whether or not it beeps when you press buttons on here, you know what I mean? It's a very um, nice system and it can do a lot more than your AutoZone code reader um, and it's hard there's so much you can do with this that it's really hard to dive into it in one video like I said for the most part those are the things I use on a daily basis as long as I'm able to read the codes the engine is throwing at me and get some very basic data I'm good but there really are a lot of things you can do on here not all of them are supported for every vehicle for instance if I go to O2 sensor test um, you know, I can test it and it actually says the vehicle does not support. So not everything is supported on every vehicle, which is unfortunate, but obviously that's not the reader's fault. But, you know, just going through everything, there's so much you can do. You can even see, you know, how long it's been since the uh, check engine light was last cleared, which I think is a very cool feature if you are buying a used car. You know, sometimes the person you're sell uh, that's selling it will go and clear the codes before you come take a look at it because they don't want you to know it has problems. With this thing, you'll be able to check that. If they don't want you to be able to plug this in, then they're probably hiding something. So I will definitely be bringing this if I'm buying a car with OBD2 in the future at all. You know, it's really good. You can see what's happening on the car as you go, and you can see if they've cleared the codes or if it has any codes. And this actually right now, this kind of came loose and it's rebooting it right now. Um, and it's kind of in a boot cycle because it doesn't have a good connection. I haven't really been touching this at all. I've just been using this normally. So that's what I'm kind of talking about with the loose connection. Um, I'm not sure if this is mine or not. 
but you know, that's something that's frustrating when you're trying to use these. I'm gonna double check that right now. This is my super cheap Bluetooth and Wi-Fi OBD2 scanner that works pretty terribly. Um, I would stay away from this one for sure. If you plug it in, we can see. It's hard to see from where I am. We we'll plug it in here. You can see. It is kind of loose, but the way this connects does not actually ever lose power. I was able to use this, and I mean, I couldn't realistically use it to actually do what I needed it to do because it just doesn't work, but it was consistently connected to power, and this light never turned off or even flickers when you move it. So the connection on here, unfortunately, is actually better than on here. Um, now, my port does seem to be kind of worn and you know that's probably not going to be the case on every vehicle but i feel like if this can do it well this should be able to as well especially for the price you're paying nonetheless let's go ahead and take a look at the actual unit itself and talk about the build quality i was actually very impressed with the build quality this is actually all it looks kind of hard but this is like a soft touch plastic overall it's it's such a solid package and i was really impressed um, the screen, you know, you guys saw earlier, it's a full color display. It's very easy to use. Even the buttons have a very solid click, and this is not something I was expecting to see in a code reader. So I've shown you a couple of the features of the scanner and talked about what it can do, shown you around it and how it feels, everything like that. Now it's time to talk about price. This is $180 at normal retail. Right now on Amazon, I know it's about $122, which is definitely better, but that's still a pretty significant purchase. You know, what's the benefit of having this over just borrowing your friends or taking it to an auto parts store and getting it scanned? Uh, in California, we actually can't go to AutoZones and have them scan our codes. Um, in the entire state, for some reason, auto parts stores can't actually do that for you, which is really annoying. Thanks, California. But that brings me to whether or not it is worth the price. I would say if you're somebody who regularly uses an OBD2 scanner, you know, if you're in the field and you're constantly buying or selling cars, you're fixing stuff for your friends or fixing things professionally, this is probably somewhere that's a great place to start for something like that. However, if you only have one car that uses OBD2 and you only use it to diagnose a problem that you would hopefully never really have and only comes now and then, it's really hard to justify this when you can get something that does what you need in a basic sense for so much less money. Now granted, you won't get any of those other features like this great interface, data locking, or a live view if you go with one of those cheap ones, but I haven't realistically found a purpose for me to use those things other than to think it's kind of cool. So I will say this, for the features you get, this is definitely a really good value. It's not that much more expensive than what you can go buy elsewhere, for myself, I probably would not be too hard off if I just had one of those basic $60 ones from AutoZone or O'Reilly that can read it and clear the codes. However, the features are definitely worth it. To me, I just don't use it enough, but I could see there being a lot of people out there who would. I'd also really like to thank Livia from Launch for sending us this review unit. It was really cool to take a look at this and see what it can do. My hands-on experience has been really good with this, and again, if you're looking for a serious OBD2 scanner, this is a really great way to go for your money. I'm going to be leaving a link below to check this out on Amazon. I believe they have the best price on this right now. It's only $122, which is a lot less than its normal $180 price tag. Also on Amazon, you'll be able to see a bunch of reviews, a full feature list of what this thing can do, and get a really good idea of what you're getting. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know if you think this is cool. Have a good one.